In your religion, you are saying that you are believing in three gods, while we Muslims believe that God is only one, and this is the right religion and the right choice. God, God is surely one. There is no one except Allah. There is no one that you worship except Allah. And what do you believe? You say that God is God, Father is God, Jesus is God. One plus one plus one is always three. No one in the world will say that one plus one plus one, God plus God plus God is equal to only one God. No, it will be equal to three gods. So you are misguided by your priests. And what we are following, it is the same which has been written in the Bible. The Bible has said, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. But what you believe, you will say that Jesus is God. Jesus cannot be God. He is the beloved of the God. He is prophet of the God. Now come going further. In the book of Deuteronomy, there are many commandments of Jesus, Prophet Jesus, Hadisa alayhi salam. In Bible Exodus, he has said, I am the Lord, Allah is saying, I am the Lord that brought you from, that brought you out from the land of Egypt. There is no God besides me. Book of Deuteronomy, Bible, in Bible Exodus, there is no God besides me. This is the same thing the Muslims believe, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah. There is no God besides me. But when you listen to these two verses, they are clearly portraying that the Bible is saying there is only one God. But my dear brothers, our Christian brothers, they are misguided. When you will enter in the church, you will be finding idol statues. Islam and Christianity is completely against the idols, statues and worshipping of the idols. But when you will be entering the church, first you will find the statue of Prophet Jesus. In some churches, you will be finding the uh, statue of Mother Mary holding a child. In some, in some churches, you will be finding the statues of fishes, dolphins, doves, a cross with a hanging man. This is not your religion. You are misguided. The Christians are being misguided. The Islam is the beautiful religion which has said there is no idol worshipping in Islam. And in fact, what they are following, we just need to focus and guide them with true love and wisdom. We just need to show them the references that your religion, Christianity is against the idol worshipping and what you are being taught in the churches and what you are doing is completely against your religion and Islam has given the complete guidance. Now I am showing you the reference in book of Exodus chapter 20 verse number 4. The second commandment of Prophet Jesus, you will be amazed to listen to this, Hazrat Isa has said that shall not make any idol. Isa is saying, it has written in Bible, they should not make any idol, any image of anything, that thing should be in the sky, on the earth, in the water, or beneath the earth, you should not make any idol, this has been written in the Bible, Alhamdulillah, the Muslims are following this, we are on the right path, but when we see the churches, they are filled with the statues, a hanging man, they are totally, this is Islam is against this, and what you are doing, you are in fact not following this, the, your religion, your religion is against idol worshipping. Alhamdulillah, we are following the command. We are following the commandments of prophets. We are the true lovers of Prophet Jesus. Jesus said there should be no idol. We are not making any idol. Tell me any Muslim in the world who is doing idol worshipping. Ask yourself, is there any Muslim in the world who is making the statues of Prophet Muhammad? Is there any Muslim in the world who is making a statue of Mother Khadija? Is there any Muslim in the world who is making a statue of Mother Amr? No one! But you are doing You are making a statue of Mother Mary and what you are doing is against the religion of Islam and against the religion of Christianity. But you are misguided. You have never opened the Bible. So my brothers, this is the religion which we are following. Alhamdulillah, we are on the right path. Now coming on the second thing. We follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we will be discussing this with many Christians, they say, Okay, I love my God, but I will not follow Muhammad. I follow my Prophet. My Prophet is Prophet Jesus. I will not follow Prophet Muhammad. Now today, I am showing you the reference, so you can guide your brothers, Christian brothers in love. Bible is in my hand, book of John, chapter 14, verse 16 and verse 26. Verse 16 and verse 26, and I will ask the Father, He will give you another helper to be with you forever. Who is this another helper? Alhamdulillah, the remembrance of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is there present in the Bible and these Christians, they don't know their religion. And we, we don't know that what is the excellence and what is the superiority of our religion. 
that we are following Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Our Christian brothers think that Prophet Jesus is the last prophet. There is no need to believe in any prophet. When I discuss with some Christians, they say, "Why do you think Prophet Muhammad is superior?" There is no need of prophet after prophet Jesus. Prophet Jesus is final prophet. I say no. The mention of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is there in the Bible, book of John, chapter 14, verse 16, and verse 26. Prophet Jesus has clearly said, "There will be another helper. I will. I have asked the Father. There will be another helper. He would remain with you forever. So we should ask the Christian brother, who is this another helper? Who is this another helper?" Is he inferior than Prophet Jesus or superior than Prophet Jesus? If he is inferior than Prophet Jesus, he is not a prophet and there is no need of him. And if he is superior than Prophet Jesus, he is surely Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And verse number 26, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all the things. This is the same thing mentioned in the Quran. The prophets will come and they will teach you what you don't know. The same thing is mentioned in the Bible that the Prophet Jesus is saying, but the helper, the Holy Spirit will come and he will teach you all the things which you don't know. So Prophet Jesus Isa has given the direct tidings that after me Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be done. So Alhamdulillah, what we are following is in accordance with the Bible. And what they are following is neither in accordance with the Bible nor in accordance with Islam. And neither in any of the earlier religions which prophets have brought. No prophet has never made a statue. And they are making statues and building idols. Now coming to the other part of our today's lecture. Alhamdulillah, when we are coming in the mosques, you see, nobody here is wearing sandals and shoes. But the Christians, when they go to the church, they wear the shoes. The ladies are wearing the sandals. Usually, they make their prayers. While making their prayers, they have their shoes on. They wear their shoes. Alhamdulillah, what the Muslims do? The Muslims never wear shoes when we are entering the mosque. We put the shoes out in the respect of the mosque. Now, same thing has been mentioned in Exodus chapter 3, verse number 5. Moses was on Mount Sinai. Come closer, put off your shoes. Come closer, put off your shoes. For the place you are standing, the Moses, the place you are standing is the holy ground. So it has been mentioned in the Bible that Prophet Moses put off his shoes because he was standing in the holy ground. If you are going to the church and you consider the church as a holy place, why are you not putting off your shoes? So Alhamdulillah, we follow the commandments mentioned in the Bible, we follow the what is mentioned in the Quran. We when we enter in the mosque, we put off the shoes. So we are following the right religion and the commandments of God Almighty. Now coming, Alhamdulillah, now you see, when we want to start our prayers, we start with washing our face. Go and ask any Christian in the world, when you enter the church, is there ablution area in your church? Do you make wuzu? Do you make wuzu? Before starting your prayers? If the Muslim becomes obligatory on you and you, in you and you make a, a relationship with your wife and you make an intercourse with your wife, after doing that, do you make a Muslim and then you enter the church? Do you consider this as obligatory? And do you make a wuzu before making prayers in your churches? Certainly not. They do not make the wuzu and they do not do the evolution like the Muslims do. And they say that we are on the right path. Alhamdulillah, it has been proven in the Bible. Now I am showing you the reference. Book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 32. It has been mentioned in the Bible what the Muslims do. Alhamdulillah, it has been said. Then the Lord said to him, Take off the sandals in another place. And Moses, Harun, and the son washed the hand and feet. So that they will not die. Wash the hands and feet so that they will not die. Wash the hands and feet. Washing of the hands and feet. So washing of your hands and feet has been proven from the Bible. So you may ask your Christians, followers or friends, do you wash your feet? Do you wash your hands before starting your prayers? You will never wash your feet. You will never wash your hands. You start your prayers like this, but we Muslims follow the commandments of God Almighty Allah. Similarly, Alhamdulillah. We have been blessed to be humble in front of our God. What we do when we start our prayers, we do prostration. We do sajda. What is sajda? Is putting yourself on the ground. Putting yourself on the ground and putting your hips up. And this is the most humble way 
to supplicate and to pray Allah and to glorify the Lord. We are doing the same way. Every rakat has two sajda. We say, Subhana Rabbi Lala, Allah Akbar, Murumudi Makhur, Allah Akbar, Subhana Rabbi Lala, Subhana Rabbi Lala. We do this. You can ask your Christian brother, have you done sajda in your life? They say, sajda is not necessary. This is not in our religion. We can say, Alhamdulillah, this sajda is surely in your religion. Now to satisfy you, just to make you proud of your religion, which we are following, Bible is in my hand, book of Matthew, chapter number 26, verse number 39, it has been mentioned, and Jesus, going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed to God. You can ask your Christian, this is mentioned in the Bible, that Jesus fell on his face, and pray to God, we are following the sunnah of Jesus, you are not following the sunnah of Jesus. If you want to follow the Bible, come and enter Islam, come our Muslim brothers, become our Muslim brothers. Because we are following it. It is the way of Jesus, how he used to pray God. Jesus used to fall on the face and there are many references. Like example, Genesis Bible, chapter 17, verse number 3, Abraham fell on his face and God talked to him. Abraham fell on the face. Joshua fell on the face to the earth and did the worship. Moses made haste, bowed his head towards the earth and worship. Moses bowed his head towards the earth. Joshua bowed his head towards the earth. Prophet Jesus fell on the face, fell on the earth and put his face on the earth. Who, is, who are the Christians who are doing this sajda? No one, no Christian is following the Bible. We are the true followers of the commandments of Almighty Allah. And if, if you can ask them who are following the Bible, why don't you do sajda like this? They start doing the sajda and praising God Almighty. They say, why? We have not been guided like this. We have never been told by our Muslim brother that sajda is mentioned in your Bible. Alhamdulillah, what we are doing is the right direction is the right commandment of God Almighty. Now, Alhamdulillah, what we say our Creator, how we pronounce it. In Chichewa language, everyone who is who is a local person, he says Mulungu. It is not the appropriate word. In Christianity, they say God. But Alhamdulillah, all of us are Muslims. What we say, La ilaha illallah. There is no God except Allah. So the correct word is Allah. Alhamdulillah, what the religion we are following, we should be proud of it. The Christians, in their every book, every testament, they have replaced the word. The actual, the actual word in Christianity was Allah. Allah. Allah or Allah. They have replaced this word with God. And this is such an inferior word for the superiority of God. If you write a God is greater in G, it will become big God. If you write it, God is smaller g, it will become a small God. If somebody is guardian, it, you can say God Father, God Mother. So God Father is common in English language, God Mother is common in English language, and similarly, Goddess, there can be feminine of this God. God Ling, an inferior, a short God. Alhamdulillah, we say, Qul Allahu Ahad. Allah is one, and the word Allah, neither it is a masculine, nor it is a feminine, feminine, and neither it can be, you can say it, is a, it, it, it can be plural, neither it is a plural, neither it is a, neither it is a masculine, neither it is a feminine. So the Allah, what we are saying, daily basis, Allah, 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 is the correct word, and you would be amazed, Alhamdulillah. These people, you can challenge them. You can, this Quran which we are following, Quran is the Arabic text, the original text, which Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given in the Arabic language. The same Arabic language is here. You can ask your Christian brother that in this language, Bible came. He will say, Hebrew language, Hebrew language, Arabic language. So oh, we want to see the Bible in the Arabic language, Hebrew language. You would be amazed. If he provides you, he will not be able to provide you the Bible in the original language. If he provides you the Bible in the original Hebrew language, my challenge is then to them 6,823 times the word Allah has been mentioned in the Bible. 6,823 times the word Allah, Allah has been mentioned in the Bible, but you will never find a Christian brother saying Allah, they will always say Allah, because they what they are following is being interpolated, is a fabricated book. Alhamdulillah, what we are following is the right path and the right commandment of God Almighty Allah. Now coming to the last point, we are being 
it has been an allegation of Muslims. Now these are very important points of today's lecture. This Islam has spread by sword. You do jihad, you go to battlefields, you are terrorists, you are extremists. Islam has spread by sword. Now the open challenge to the whole Christianity to understand the message of Islam and message of peace. We are peace lovers, we are peacemakers. We spread love, we want to guide you and guide our brothers. Now, 604 pages of the Quran, 114 verses in the 114 chapters of the Quran, 6,666 verses in the Quran. It is an open challenge by Muslim priests. Tell me any any single time the word sword has been mentioned in the Quran. You said that Islam has spread by sword. You say that Islam has spread by sword. We say that we say that in the Quran, there is not a single time the word sword has been mentioned in the Quran. And B, if you open the Bible, 200 times the word sword has been mentioned in the Bible. The book is in my hand. Book of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 34. It's Prophet Jesus, alayhi salam, and peace be upon him, said, I did not come with a peace. I have not come with peace, I have, I have came with sword. It is time to sell your coat and buy a sword. It is mentioned in the Bible. It is the time to sell out your coat and buy a sword. But there has been never a single word of sword mentioned in the Quran and you would be amazed. Arabic and Arabic language, sword, there are 300, 300 synonyms. Muhammad is also sword. Self is also sword. Hussam is also sword. But not a single synonym of sword has been mentioned in the Quran. Now the last words, Alhamdulillah. There were ten Muslims, but never a Christian has been forced to change his religion. Muslims ruled Spain for 800 years. We ruled the Spain for 800 years, but never in the Muslim empire a Christian has been forced to change his religion. Islam has spread to Nigeria, Islam has spread to Kenya, Islam has spread to Tanzania, Islam has spread to Somalia. Ask which Muslim army from Pakistan or Afghanistan or Saudi Arabia has ever came to Nigeria to do jihad. Islam has spread by the word of mouth. Islam has spread by the message of peace. Similarly, how Islam leads Indonesia, how Islam leads Malaysia. There has been never a battle in Indonesia. Similarly, before, before arrival of Hinduism, in India, Muslims ruled India for 1,000 years. 1,000 years, the Muslims ruled in India, and there had never been that a Hindu has been forced to change his religion. But now, the Muslims are being forced to change their religion to Christianity. Alhamdulillah, we are proud. So, my brother, Abhari, Anka, Khalani, Pazi, Kuli, Mula, Pazi, Dati, Ulendo, Vabena, Tapa, Ulendo. Our life in this world is very short. So, what we can do, we can try our best to inspire our Muslim brothers to follow the Islam properly and where we are living we can guide we can go to villages in Malawi and guide them the true religion of Islam. And if you have if you have resources, what you can do? You can buy a Quran in Chichewa language and you can give the Quran and gift of two thousand Pacha to a Christian brother. I'm sure the message, our tongue has no power, but the words of God has surely power when he will start reading the message of the Quran, his life will change and he will be a true Muslim. And we have to show this through our character. I will end my word through George Bernard Shaw. George Bernard Shaw, Christian, a non Muslim, what he has said if any religion has the chance of conquering Europe in the next hundred years, the next hundred years are the years of Islam. If any religion of the world has chance to conquer Europe in the next hundred years, it will be surely the religion of Islam due to its character, due to its, due to its everlasting message. So my brothers, you are true Muslims. You have come in the mosque. Have you ever in your life tried to make a Christian coming towards Islam with your character? Some of our brothers are sitting here. They are so having hatred and enmity in our heart. What they are doing, in fact, of inspiring Christians to Islam, they are putting our Muslim brothers out of the mosque. We are making salatu salam, you are sitting, you are not standing. There should be no hatred and enmity, la ikra There is no compulsion in our religion. We should spread our religion with peace and kindness and the guidance on the right path. I will end with the same words in the Dina, in the law in Islam, repudding Chibi Pesu Chabinu, Chimene Chiri Pafu Bidi Allah, Dichi Islam, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi.